Hey, what's up guys, Norchetto here. Thanks for stopping in. Uh, and today I wanna jump right into it. I want to talk about our roster and where we're sitting in stage two because it's it's not looking great right now. Um, but I think there's good reason there and I think there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So yeah, let's jump into it. Uh, everyone knows that DeFran you know, retired at the end of stage one. So uh, he went back to streaming. We did pick him up as an Atlanta Rain partnered streamer, um, but you know that's what makes him happy. That's what he wants to do. Power to him and wish him all the best. But that did leave a a hole in our roster for a good, you know, Zarya player tracking uh, a DPS player. Um, and uh, we picked up Baby Bay. Now we did have Inlayer, who is a uh, who's like a widow specialist. He's he's uh, uh, getting swapped in more on those kind of flick aim heroes. But uh, but as far as a Zarya player goes, we did want to pick someone up, and we grabbed Baby Bay, who I, I think was actually a really good choice um he is someone who has played with brad before for, with with sefi uh he has um been benched all season because sinatra is just doing nuts this season and uh i think he really wanted to play so we picked him up i, I think this is actually going to work out really really well um he's had a few issues with uh decision making maybe some some uh bad grabs here and there uh but i think that stuff's getting better and i think that has a lot to do with just uh, team synergy uh we also picked up fried from gladiator's Legion, their contenders team uh, for an off tank. He's a uh, um, off tank player, diva specialist, and uh, we picked up Funny Astro, who is a, a streamer, a Lucio uh, main, and damn good Lucio main. But he is a um, uh, two way player, so I expect to see him um, on uh, the contenders team more than anything. Uh, he is going to be. I mean, he is a, a full fledged. Uh, member of the Atlanta Reign with that two-way contract, so I expect he is looking to move to the house in uh, in LA before um, maybe jumping on and playing with the Contenders guys because we have been seeing Astro uh, with Contenders, but that is another player we picked up, so we're going to have someone else at least for scrims and in the house, but the two people I definitely want to focus on are uh, Baby Bay and Fried because they're the ones that have been getting playtime and... Um, they're the ones that I've been having to deal with a lot of this backlash coming from our, our uh, poor performance in the last few weeks. Um, and what I think is going on is something something that we talked about, uh, you know, preseason and the early parts of the season was this uh, this synergy uh, aspect that teams need to have, especially in the three three meta where you know, it's it's so focused on team play and, and making sure your bubbles are effective and making sure you're traveling as a team and working together and using your abilities in such a way that the entire team benefits from them and can capitalize on, on anything you do in any of your cooldowns. Um, so with that meta, there's a lot of, of plays. When I call this, we all do this. When I call this, we all do this. And this is something that uh, not only did they have, you know, weeks of scrims leading up to the season, but they played all of season one doing and using this style with Defran, who's no longer there. What has happened is we've moved to stage two where the meta has shifted slightly. Now, we're still seeing a lot of the 3-3. Three, three. We're still seeing a lot of goats, but we're seeing a lot of teams kind of toy around with other metas um, and and test more, you know, heavier DPS comms, that, that Hammond uh, solo tank play um, uh, for DPS comms, things like that. And... It's requir requiring a lot of uh, um, on-the-fly adaptation. And something we talked about that was a little bit of a concern with the, the roster we have is communication issues and, and problems uh, kind of synergizing. Well, when it's GOATs, when it's these are the plays we're going to see, these are the plays we're going to run, let's just you know run them when these things get called out, it's fine. You just know the keywords, you know what you're supposed to do, you do it. But when you start running GOATs and you come up against you know, maybe a Bastion and an Arrest and a Bunker comp you don't know how to deal with, you have to figure out on the fly, what's the best way that we can work together to get through this choke to get around here and to take this down? And not only are we seeming to struggle with um, adapting on the fly and, and communicating what we think we should do with one another to, to get this stuff done, uh, we're also doing it with new players who haven't really been playing with um, the rest of our team as much as, as other teams, you know, we we replaced uh, two very very um, heavy hitters on our roster for for stage two so far, and it's um, it's it's shown a little bit. It's it's shown in in positioning and alt usage and just general team synergy and the ability to adapt. And I think that's why our performance has suffered so much. You have teams like the uh, London Spitfire who we lost to that 
Um, they have a ton of individual talent and are all on the same page, but had a problem with that uh, the the huge amount of team synergy required to pull off goats against teams who are better at it. But now that we're moving back to where they can, you know, really kind of fall into their own and, and do their own thing while you know, adapting on the fly, I think we're going to see London being a much, much stronger team. Unfortunately, it's affecting Atlanta negatively. Um, so, you know, that's why we're not doing well. That's why we lost to the Valiant. The Valiant are, are capitalizing on what this meta is bringing, and we are being hurt by it. Um, so, what I, you know, I was saying there's the, the light at the end of the tunnel. And what I think that is, is we have shown some... Um, really brilliant play even with these problems when things click they click hard and we have we've steamrolled teams on paris we've um i mean we've done a lot of individual plays individual maps that have looked really really good and what that is is when the communication works when it clicks and when those players that are new to the roster kind of start to feel what the rest of the team are doing we are an insane team. We still have the talent. We still have uh, the ability to take down uh, good teams. It's just some communication issues with this adaptability. It's not that we can't adapt. It's that we have trouble communicating with each other how to adapt. And then, um, yeah, and then once the other players kind of get it, get more adapted to the rest of the team's play style. Now, Baby Bay, this is going to be much more important on because he is going to be a, a good portion of the damage, knowing when to um, you know throw a grab and know that his team is going to be able to follow up on it and uh, um, trusting the, the rest of your team to, to be able to do so and, and not think you have to carry and things like that. Very important things with a 3-3 meta. Um, but with Fried, it's, a, it's an interesting case because we know that... Um, uh, it, Daco is still on the team. Daco did not retire. Daco did not, you know, quit. He didn't get traded. For all we know, um, there have been some rumors that there was issues uh, with him disagreeing with decisions uh, made about the support line and and something going on there. Uh, I definitely don't know all the details, and and honestly, I don't think with the limited information we have, I don't think it's really worth it to speculate too much. But um, there is uh, there is a good chance we'll have Daco back at some point, and then him and Fryder going to be swapping back and forth for different reasons um but for now it looks like we are sticking with fried and uh we we got to get over this this communication hump uh i do think it's been getting better i, I think that um uh we have been uh able to to play alongside each other better uh you can see pokpo from you know week one uh of stage two into week two of stage two and just his positioning around his team and providing um, uh, benefit for the team to be able to capitalize on and not just trying to kind of make openings that the team aren't aware of or, or be in a position that he should not be in that that's going down and he's he's uh, he's doing a lot better uh, about positioning even without Daco so um, so yeah I think there is a light there I think that that we have we are probably a more skilled team then uh, our record has shown for sure. Uh, we are probably a more skilled team than a lot of teams uh, on the uh, or in the league right now. But it doesn't matter if we can't work together to get that skill on the table and and actually capitalize and win games. So, um, so yeah, we just gotta we gotta trust each other. We gotta work together. And uh, I think we can pull it out. I think this is going to be a rough stage for us with with New York coming up twice in the next few weeks. Um, but remember that we had a good stage one, and this is only stage two of four. So we can uh, we can struggle a little bit as long as we put the pieces together and come back. And I, I really think we can uh, we can do that. So um, and to to leave you guys on this episode, I'd like to uh, uh, kind of paraphrase something that Pokepo said in the last episode of Rain Rising, which was. Um, that sometimes, you know, what one of the ways to beat your enemy is to exploit their weakness. When they make a mistake, you exploit it and you take them down. But he says something even more important than that is making sure that you're synergizing with your team. If you can't play with your team, then how can you together exploit your enemy's weakness? So I think that speaks volumes as to what I'm saying, that... Um, he also understands that there is an issue with 
uh, new players and working together that needs to be overcome before we can try and, and counter other teams' strats. And I think if we can, uh, um, if we can get on the same page and, and really get that communication and synergy down, we're going to be a beastly team again. That, that Pokebo, he's a, he's a smart guy. He's a smart guy. But that's what I got today, guys. Uh, when there is more news drama, something like that, and, and uh, I, I feel like I have uh, some insight on it, I will let you know. And until then, let it rain. <laughs>